Hi, this is Mrs. Bateson, and in this screencast we're going to talk about naming and writing formulas for molecular or covalent compounds. So when you're using this method, this only applies to covalent compounds, which are also sometimes called molecular compounds. So that means these are going to be compounds that only contain nonmetals. So this method cannot be used for any other type. This is only for covalent, which means there are only nonmetals present. When you're writing the formulas for these, usually the method that they use is the least electronegative element is written first. So if you don't have the formula in front of you, and maybe you have a structure and you're translating that structure into the formula, the element that is furthest to the left on the periodic table, with the exception of hydrogen, which would be your, your least electronegative element, would be written down first. So the rules that we use for naming compounds that are covalent are similar to the rules that we use for ionic with just a couple minor changes. So we're still writing the name of the first element with its whole name. So the full element name is used. The second part of it, the second element, is named as if it were an anion, which just means drop in the ending and add an IDE. So again, we're still looking at name of the first, IDE on the second. The difference is that this time we do care about what those subscripts are. So we're going to use prefixes to tell us the numbers of atoms present as indicated by those subscripts. When you use prefixes, you always use a prefix on the second element. The first element you use a prefix if there's more than one. So you would never use the prefix mono on the first element. So here are the prefixes that we need to worry about. So mono indicates 1, di is 2, tri is 3, tetra 4, penta 5, hexa 6, hepta 7, octa 8. The two that are not on there, if you want to add these to your notes also, nona is 9, and deca is 10. And these are probably very similar to the prefixes that you use maybe in your math class. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So we'll put all these up here first. And then there's our prefix table, so we can look at that. So my first one, BF3. First of all, let's notice that these are all covalent compounds. So every element on this page here, they're all nonmetals. So these would all represent covalent compounds. So we never, ever use prefixes when we're naming ionic compounds. This only works for... Um, the covalent compounds. So my first one, there's only one of the first element, so I don't need a prefix. So this is going to be boron. So I use the name of the whole first element and then use a prefix to indicate how many of the second element there are. So there are three, so that would be tri. I use the root of that element, so floor, and then IDE on the end. So name of the first, IDE on the end, and then I added my prefix to tell me how many of each were present. My second one, we know that is water, but the technical name of that would be dihydrogen, so I need a prefix because there's more than one, but it's still just the name, so dihydrogen, and then one oxygen, so I always have a prefix on the second one. So this would be monoxide. Instead of having those double O's there, I'm going to drop one of them. So I make this monoxide. Okay, my next one, two N's, five O's. So dinitrogen. And instead of pentaoxide, I'm just going to call it pentoxide. So I'm going to drop that A. Next one, CO carbon monoxide, so that is the substance that's produced as a result of incomplete combustion, so this is something that can be dangerous if it's in your house. And then my second one, carbon dioxide, so this is what you get in complete combustion, we'll talk more about that later. So carbon monoxide versus carbon dioxide. When you are looking at writing the formulas, this time there's no crisscrossing like there are for ionic or like there's for ionic compounds. So here, 
this is probably the easiest of all the naming stuff that we do, all we have to do is decode the prefixes. So when we're writing the formulas, we just use the prefixes in our name to tell us how many of each element is present. So carbon tetrachloride means we have one carbon, and tetra down here is four, and four chlorine, so CCl4. Next one, nitrogen dioxide means I have one N, two O's. Iodine pentafluoride, one N, five F's. Disulfur trioxide means I have two S's, three O's, S2O3. And then my last one, nitrogen trihydride is NH3, which more commonly we would call that compound ammonia, but the technical name would be nitrogen trihydride, which is NH3.